I'm sure we've all heard of Tesla. I mean, who hasn't? They're a kick-ass rock band from... Wait, this isn't about them. Tesla Inc. is a boring company from Palo Alto, Texas, Austin, California. Led by the so-called financial expert Lloyd Ostertag. In the early 2000s, they dabbled with electric cars, building a two-seater with no weather protection a lack of trunk space and limited towing capacity. Failing to impress car reviewers Larry, Curly and Moe, they continue to struggle with the most basic of car features, having yet to design a simple gauge cluster. I mean it's not like it's rocket science. Perhaps it's those shortcomings, coupled with their inability to focus on just one thing, that their parts can now be found for sale on eBay. Which brings us to the Tesla Model S Gen 2 onboard charger. Why this one? Why not something else? And what is this video all about? Not all Gen 2 onboard chargers have been created equally. And some do not lend themselves to EV conversions. I'm doing an EV conversion. More specifically, I'm shoving this and this into that. And to charge this, I need a charger. So why didn't I just use the charger from the BMW that gave its life for my batteries? Wouldn't that make sense? Aside from the fact that it costs twice as much as the Tesla charger. But how was I going to set it up and configure it to do what I want it to do outside of the Beamer? Now I could have gone online to a place like EV West and bought one of their high-end chargers. But I was only three grand short. At the time I recorded this video, electric cars have been around for over a decade. Plenty of time to have some of them find their way to the local wreckers and hit the used parts market. Allowing the folks at Open Inverter to reverse engineer the technology. and offer us a solution at a fraction of the cost. And although I couldn't tell you what led me to Damien's channel in the first place, was it my love of gome cats or quest for charger knowledge, I'm glad I found it. This channel is full of EV conversion information. Among them, the Tesla project. And in more detail, his video on reverse engineering the Tesla charger. Hello folks, and welcome to yet another episode of the Tesla project. And in this episode, we are going to be having our first look at the Tesla charger. Not only did Damien McGuire spearhead the reverse engineering process, but he documented it and offers the secret sauce on his GitHub. It's available in both Alienese as well as Hieroglyphs. allowing those with an electrical engineering gene to build their own circuit boards from scratch, taking their EV builds to another level. This is not just plug and play. It requires some elbow grease. So let's find out if a guy like me can pull this off. The three power modules inside the Tesla charger 
are just bricks if there is no controller to control them. And outside the actual Tesla, the charger is fish out of the water, completely useless. So we have to R&R the OEM logic board with an open inverter one. Although Damien McGuire does all the heavy lifting for us, his boards are sold as kits, meaning it's up to you to complete them. Also, not all the parts are supplied. It will be up to you to source all the necessary connectors. DigiKey is a good place to order your parts. Their website is logical, easy to search, and the parts arrive fairly quickly. Although there is no traditional tech support for us to call, there is an active forum community willing to help you, as well as a well-documented wiki. Looking back, the hardest thing about this phase of the project, due to the electronic part shortage, was liberating and cleaning this 24-way JST connector off of the original circuit board and painstakingly soldering it on to the new one. The 30-way Samtec through connector, as it is called, went on much easier. So there are connectors on two sides of this charger. This is the low voltage side. The charger gets its power from a regular 12 volt car battery. For that, I had to make my own harness. Shortly after the board has power, it will broadcast its Wi-Fi network. You can configure your settings at this point. Sorry, you know I couldn't resist. So this brings us to the high voltage side, the business end of the charger. I wanted to start off by making the most basic connection, just enough to bring this thing to life. This would only power up one module, but if I was to make smoke, better to just smoke one than all three. I always wanted to try an Anderson connector, ever since I saw one on an electric go-kart, and thought, why not? What a perfect opportunity.
I also decided to ruin another extension cord, this one with a ground. I started out by demystifying the 3 prong versus 4 prong 240 volt power cables. Then I grabbed the first one available. I followed the same game plan as with the 120. First, only wire up one module. And here's an idea to power up all three modules using that 240 dryer cord. By also running an Anderson connector on this cord, I could easily swap between the 120 and the 240 as I pleased. Things proved to be more complicated on the DC output side, as it required fuses in order to protect our battery. I also went with an Anderson connector on the DC output side, this time using the larger SB120. The SB120 may seem as a bit of an overkill for a charger that puts out only 46 amps. However, the reason I chose it was because of its powerful sizes. Those little metal ends had to be large enough to fit not one but two leads each from my BMW battery pack. Here are the BMW 530E 6 cell modules. Well, in the end it worked and I was able to charge my battery. So I guess I must have done something right. 